Hey there, everyone. This is David Wo. Welcome to this week's episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Today, it is my pleasure to be interviewing somebody very, very interesting and talking about something we haven't uh, spoken about yet on this podcast. And that's all about investing in mobile home parks. So it's my pleasure to have Mr. Frank Rolf on the call with us today. Frank, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So where are you calling in from today? Today I'm in Chicago. Is that home for you? Not at all. No, I'm on the road at all of our different mobile home parks. <laughs> so Frank has been investing in mobile home parks, I believe, for over 30 years. Is that correct, Frank? Uh, the mobile home park portion for about 25. And then wow. I did about, about 14 years of, of billboards before that. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And what I find very interesting is the fact that you and your partner are the fifth largest mobile home park owners in uh, North America. And you have 250 mobile home parks in your portfolio right now. Is that correct? Roughly correct. That's right. That's mind boggling. So Frank, let's, let's just, before we jump into that, let's kind of rewind a little bit here. And why don't you tell us, how did you go from billboards to mobile home parks? How did you get into the whole mobile home park investing thing or real estate? Sure. Yeah, what happened today was I sold, I sold the uh, billboard company off and uh, then needed to find something new to do. So I called around some of the landowners I had built billboards on. I built two of them on a guy named Ron's mobile home park down in Dallas. So on one phone call, he sold me the park. Well, <laughs> why about it? Why not just experience it myself? Four hundred thousand dollars, ten thousand down, three hundred ninety thousand. He'd carry for thirty years. Wow, and that was the deal. So that's how I got into it. All right. So it sounds like you kind of stumbled into the whole mobile home park field, and uh, you've rock and rolled with it big time. So I don't know if you've got much other, uh, you know, many other reference points when it comes to real estate investing, but. You've been around the block quite a few times now. Why, why do you think, why are mobile homes, your mobile home parks, your choice for your real estate investing strategy? Uh, first thing is they're, they, it, they've got a strange supply and demand issue because they haven't allowed them to build, be built since about the 70s. So everyone hates them. Cities hate them. The average American hates them. So they're not going to ever allow new ones to be built. People are afraid of them, think they ruin property values. So they're kind of a necessary evil in many, many bureaucrats' minds. So they allow what's there to continue, but they don't want any more. I like yeah. the fact that life shut down. That's a, that's a plus to me. I uh, love the fact that affordable housing is a big thing right now in the U.S. So if we were all getting super prosperous, we wouldn't need mobile home parks. But I'm a believer that we're actually going down the drain. So the demand for affordable housing grows every day. So that's a huge item for us. Third item is we're buying from moms and pops. So we're buying from the original builders who are still alive. Uh, and often because of that, we buy them not only cheap because they're not working properly, but also with seller financing. So those are those are probably the big. Those are the three most concise, best reasons I've heard for a strategy in a long time. So good on you. Yeah. 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 I did not know that. So I was aware of the whole fact that, yeah, most municipalities aren't thrilled about mobile home parks. Had no idea that they weren't making any more of them. That's yeah, well, it I don't want you to know that, Dave, because if they say that, that's in violation of the duty to serve act in the U.S., right? So we're all supposed to pretend that we, that we want to have all forms of housing. But if you're a city, you want only expensive housing because expensive housing pays a lot in taxes. Expensive housing encourages other expensive development. So when you have, if you take a typical mobile home park in America, it's a money losing proposition for the city because the tuition on each kid is seven or eight thousand a year, but the taxes on a 500 dollar home is five dollars and a five thousand dollar home is fifty dollars even if you throw in our property tax on our land per lot you're only getting about five hundred dollars a year yeah. even on could be twenty thousand dollars of school tuition so since they're losing money they're obviously very hostile about it makes sense yeah no that makes sense so you've definitely dialed a lot of things in when it comes to your particular strategy what would you consider to be your unfair advantage when it comes to investing in real estate and spe specifically mobile home parks? Well, as far as our, our personal unfair advantage? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, our unfair advantage probably is, is we've been doing this for so long 
there's so many people. Every every part that we buy, we can put it in a box based on past parts we've owned, and can just almost guess from before we buy it exactly how it will turn out. So that's probably our entry badges. We we just it, it's it's like doing anything enough times the same thing over and over. You develop a sixth sense as to what works and does not work. So we can literally size up a deal quickly, and it always turns out it ends up just exactly like, like we thought. No, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, now. And how about personality wise? What do you think? I mean, you come from the, the world of advertising sales. That was your previous incarnation. Sure. Uh, what do you think is kind of your personal skill set or unfair advantage that you bring to the table? Uh, probably the skill set of both myself and my partners were, were workaholic. We work an insane number of hours. We probably work an average of 16 hours a day, Monday through Friday. And then we're probably working about 10 hours a day, Saturday and Sunday. Wow. Uh, so we outwork everyone. Uh, we're very focused on due diligence because we're very negative people. So we always worry about everything. So we're extremely focused, which has allowed us to sidestep many big disasters over time. Uh, my, my personal, I guess, additional superpowers, I'm in the field all the time. So I'm out in the parks typically Monday through Friday. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually out there where a lot of investors who do it more passively can't be out there. They have day jobs and other obligations, but I'm physically out in the parks. What would you, just out of pure personal curiosity, what are some of like the biggest challenges that you come across or, or let's say, you know, everything, it's old hat for you now, but like somebody that's getting into mobile home parks, what are some of the challenges they typically come across that they might not be expecting? You know, the, the challenge is first off, a lot of people uh, who are not familiar with the industry don't know what an actual mobile home park is supposed to look like. Because we all get this idea off the media of Eight Mile with Eminem and Trailer Park Boys and Hurdle Manor. The trailer parks are just the, these haphazard uh, places filled with misfits of every description. The actual festival mobile home park business looked more like subdivisions. And I know most people have driven by these and maybe they thought, oh, that's not really a mobile home park. No, that's exactly what a mobile home park is. That's, that's where the money is. That's where the financing is. You want to be an owner of high density subdivisions. Those little crazy trailer parks, sure, they exist. You know, there's a few in almost every every market. You want to stay a million miles away from money in those. For most people, they just know going in what the product is actually. Is. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so you you've also written books about investing in mobile home parks. I know you've got a, a program all about that. What what do you think is the biggest problem you're helping your students solve by them getting into mobile home parks? Uh, probably twofold. One, giving them enough knowledge to feel they can actually comfortably do it. Because, uh, you know, going to get into anything, particularly mobile home parks, is just scary enough that most people can find a million reasons not to do it. Yeah. So give them reasons to do it. Uh, the other is we try and give them uh, the, the knowledge to be able to do good due diligence on them because you know, there's, there's a million stories out there of people who bought mobile home parks without any, any good due diligence and it all blew up on them. So we try and empower them to buy them, but we also try and teach them what to avoid. So it's kind of wrong. So, um, Frank, let me ask you this question. So if somebody's listening to this or watching this interview and they're going mobile home parks, never ever thought about buying a mobile home park before, why would I want to? What's what's like your your thirty second second sales pitch on why mobile home parks are such a great investment? Uh, I, big item is money. We we have the highest returns of any form of real estate that I've ever seen. Uh, the other one is is the financing situation. We have great financing, seller financing. We also we can get conduit. We get agency debt. We can get the same financing as big office buildings get. Uh, so th those are the two key reasons most people get into it. Many, many people, uh, you know, they want to maybe buy apartments. But they can't find anything attractive in price. They can't get, you know, a $3 million loan, but they can buy a half million dollar mobile home park or mom and pop carry the paper uh, at, a, at a 10 cap, 12 cap, things like that. So that's really what makes people do it. Well, it makes sense. So Frank, let's, I, I know, well, you've got a couple of hundred of these babies in your portfolio right now. You, you must have a pretty good idea of, what like an average mobile home park deal looks like. Can you kind of walk us through that? So 
So what are we looking at for number of, I don't know, units, uh, number of pads? How does it sure. look financially? Yeah, there's about 44,000 parks in the U.S. There's about 4,000 that are institutionally owned. So about 40,000 that are still left with mom and pop. If you average all those together, the average park you'll see is going to be probably between 40 and 50 lots. It's probably going to be about 80% occupied. Uh, most of them have city water and city sewer, contrary to what people think. Everyone thinks they have well and septic, and that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all about the lot rent. And often you'll find mom and pop have never kept the lot rent up to market. So a lot of the parks we buy, the lot rents are $200, and the market in that same market may be $400. So a lot of our value creation is in raising the rents to market, uh, pushing back water sewer under the customer, which is where it needs to be to begin with, to foster conservation, and then filling vacant lots. That's basically it. And also cutting costs sometimes. Sometimes mom and pop will hire a manager somewhere along the way that they befriended at parks as well as 80 lots with managers making 120 grand a year. Wow. So, and replacing the manager with something more appropriate is also a big deal. Very, very interesting. So let's say one of those one of those um mom and pop parks you got 40 to 50 lots what's the price point typically for buying one of these properties yeah a park a park may be making for 40 to 50 lots typically would be selling somewhere between half a million and a million dollars somewhere right. between 10,000 and 20,000 a pad it's going to have a cap rate typically depending on the park and running anywhere from 7 to 10% although sometimes higher but that's based on current lot rent. So that's where it gets difficult for people to grasp because in most real estate things have been maximized. Our industry, they all have mom and pop quantitative easing. So what happens is you look at the lot rent, not only when you're buying it, but what it would be say 90 days in the future when you raise it. And that's what you base your cap on. So the seven cap, when you raise the rent, maybe a 10 cap. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. So you, you just, you have to pick all those factors together and then see if you can get what we call a three point spread, that's what most people are after. That's three points from the interest rate to the cap rate, which gets you a 20% cash on cash return, which is people's benchmark minimum for most investors. So that's kind of how it works. Very cool. Very, very interesting. All right. So, um, Frank, have you got any, if, if people are going, geez, this sounds really interesting and they like to find out a little bit more, have you got any free resources for people or somewhere you can point people to go take a look at stuff? Absolutely. For about 20 years now, my partner and I have been, we started off writing little tiny books to entertain ourselves and to see if anyone out there even cared about mobile home parks. And those are just grown and grown and grown. And I write typically one to two hours a day. And all of that stuff you'll find on the website, uh, mobilehomeuniversity.com, or you can just put in mhu.com and you will find a giant pile of free material. We have a gigantic forum, we have free books, we have free articles, we have free everything, we have free videos. Yes, yeah, so that's that's where you would go to. Has, uh, that's the compendium of everything I've ever written or, or taped. Excellent. And just out of curious, a lot of our our listeners are up here in Canada. Do you have students doing this kind of stuff up here? You know, because typically Canadians think, well, that works great down there, but it won't work in Canada. What? We have a lot of Canadians. We have a lot of Canadians come to our boot camps and all of our items. I think you know the, the reason Canadians like the industry is you have mobile home parks in Canada. You have roughly 5,000 in Canada, so they can actually see the product, but your product is nothing like our product. Yours is more rustic, kind of wilderness, kind of what we would call RV park-ish in the United States, but you don't really have the true subdivision style that we have. Uh, Canadians like the, the higher cap rates. They like everything about the business model. They like all the mega trends it fits into. The only complication for Canadians is, of course, banking. Now, in, in our business where you can do seller financing, that's another way people have gotten around that. But that would be the big issue to figure out is just the banking portion if you have to use a bank. Another option might be for Canadians to go down and buy them and down in the States. Might make more but, sense. Well, well, right now I'm seeing I'm, I'm seeing in the United States. Ah, okay. Most Canadians don't want to buy the Canadian mobile home parks. They prefer the American option. So they but they but yet they know of the industry. So the only the industry only exists basically in your, country, your country and our country, and that's it. They don't have mobile home parks in, in Europe. They'd have what are called uh, caravan parks, which are sometimes filled with gypsies, literally, in Italy. I had an Italian TV station come and look at our parks at one point, and he had, he had never seen parks that, that actual conventional people lived in. <laughs> the, 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 our only RV park. Interesting. But only Canada and America share the concept of the mobile home park. Interesting. Very, very cool. 
All right. And um, Frank, from all years of experience, people who are listening to this, uh, what's the most valuable tip that you would give people that are interested in getting into mobile home investing? Well, uh, you know, I think it would fall back to the old uh, saying, uh, think like a man of action, act like a man of thought. Right. I mean, gather all the information, look at it reasonably. And if you like what you see, take action on it. Look at some properties, make offers if you like. Uh, there's no point in, in learning about it unless you do something. But also equally dangerous is doing it without having any knowledge of it. And there's a million cases I've seen of that. People call me all the time who bought mobile home parks and they'll say, uh, my sewer's not working, my water's not working, not realizing they have private sewer. And it's their own responsibility, and they didn't even know they bought that. I had a guy call me once with a, what's called a packaging plant, which is about a half a million dollar liability, and he thought he was on city sewer. Wow. So that, that's, it's dangerous. But if you're going to do it, think about it. But if you're going to think about it, do something. Good advice. Frank, very nice to meet you. Thank you very much for being on the episode. Thank you very much, Dave. Glad to be here. Take care. All right, everybody. See you next time. Well, thanks very much for checking out the Property Profits podcast. And if you like what we're doing here, please head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. We very, very much appreciate it. And if you're looking to create a regular flow of inbound investor inquiries about your real estate deals, then I invite you to attend one of my upcoming live online demonstrations. And you can check that out at Investor Attraction Demo. Dot com. Take care.